Joshua, welcome. Thank you for taking the time to speak to me here at Director's Notes. Thank you, Sarah. So please introduce Stranger at the Gate to us. Sure. So Stranger at the Gate is a documentary short. It's nominated for an Academy Award in this year for 2023. And it tells the story of a U.S. Marine who returns from combat with PTSD. He's he's filled with rage, especially toward, toward Muslims. So he decides that he's going to bomb the local mosque in his small town in, in the state of Indiana. So he um, is planning to, to do this bombing and he ends up going to the mosque to do a re- reconnaissance trip. And he, be- he comes face to face with the, uh, the congregants of the mosque. And at that point, the story takes a very um, kind of crazy turn. I don't. I don't know if I should give it away or not. We. I mean. No, we, no, happy. that's fine. Don't don't give yeah. it away. We'll let. We'll see. Maybe um, it'll unfold. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. So I read that. Uh. You just found this story. It was you know a sort of tiny in- article in a local newsprint. How? What gave you the feeling that this would make a brilliant documentary? Yeah. Well. At the time, I was doing a series of short films about American Muslim stories. And the way that came about was that when I was a a young boy growing up in upstate New York, I faced a lot of anti-Semitism. I was one of the only Jewish kids around and um, kids picked on me. You know, they called me names, um, threw pennies at me, you know, to to see if I would pick them up, you know, to show that Jews are cheap. Um, Someone threw a rock the size of a brick through the front window of our home, you know, things like that, that happened in in my childhood that stayed with me. And uh, I became a filmmaker um, in the nineties. And uh, and then after 9-11, when I saw my Muslim friends facing similar kind of hate, that's when I started making these short films about American Muslim stories. And this one when I came upon it, you know, when I found that article you mentioned, I just, you know, I just thought, my God, this is a story we need right now. You know, this is a story about our times. You know, it's it's a story about the division in our country and in the world. And it's also a story about ways that we might be able to come together uh, and, and uh, you know, like almost like a a blueprint for what could be, you know, what is possible. uh, It's, I almost see it as like the future of our world. If we, if we embrace some of these um, approaches, then things that happen in the, in the film, um, this could be a, a blueprint for how we can get along with each other. Were you worried that there would be any pushback in telling this story? that some people wouldn't want you to talk about what was eventually going to happen. I think that there, you know, there's, there was some concern and we, we tried to tell the story in a very sensitive way. I mean, this story is ultimately quite uplifting and hopeful. Mm, And, um, and so I think that all the people involved understood that this, the telling of this story um, was um, going to do good you know, that it was a message of hope, you know, that we need to start talking to each other. We need to start connecting with each other. You know, we we live in a time where, you know, like people, you know, if, if you have a friend who votes for a different candidate for a different politician than you do, like we, we live in a time where we might stop talking to that that person, you know, and we just have to find a way to connect. And the actions of the the characters in this film, you know, the congregants who greeted uh, the Marine, um, the congregants of the mosque who who greeted the Marine and took him in. And, you know, that was so game changing and, and beautiful and it saved lives. Yeah. And um, it's just something that I think, I just believe that if there were more people acting the way that they acted, um, with an open heart, 
uh, that we would have the world would be better. Yeah. Were they surprised when you approached them mm-hmm. wanting to make a documentary about this? Um I think so. I do, especially the especially the congregants of the mosque. You know, there, yeah. there's a couple that founded the mosque, Bibi Barami and Saber Barami. And, you know, he's a doctor. Saber is a physician in Muncie, Indiana. And Bibi is his his wife. She's an activist in the community. And when Richard McKinney arrived at the mosque, they did what they would always do, which is they welcomed the stranger. You know, he seemed a little scary but they also saw vulnerability in him and they welcomed him with kindness. And then he actually started coming back to the mosque after the next day and the day after and started hanging around and, and um, you know, uh, they, to them, what happened with him was kind of part of their everyday life almost, you know, to them, this story was like not that big a deal because they just did what they would always do. You know, they welcomed someone who seemed like they needed help. And they saw this Marine who was, you know, shaking and was red in the face and um, looked really vulnerable. And they just thought, we need to help this guy. And um, that, so to them, when I came to them and said, we want to make a film, they were kind of like, really? It's just, you know, it's just another day in our lives. Yeah. I think when they saw the film, they understood how how powerful their story is. No, it's, it's so true. That, like, like you said, there is a sort of mundanity um, in it, but what they've managed to achieve is just, it's incredible. How was the pre-production on everything? sort of getting ready, finding people, getting them all set up? Yeah, the pre-production was primarily just doing phone calls. You know, it was during COVID and we did a lot of uh, pre-interviews and, um, and that you know, the, the beauty of working with people like Bibi and Saber and this um, Islamic center of Muncie, which is where the whole film takes place, is that they're so hospitable you know they welcome the stories about them welcoming a stranger for us they welcomed us too you know they brought us into their community they they fed us they cooked meals for us they made sure we had everything we needed um they had us in their home so the once we got into the production it was um really lovely and um they were just in, incredible hosts yeah, you can you you can feel that. I think you can feel that, you know, throughout the film and just and they seemed so natural. They seemed everyone as well behind the camera. I mean, just seemed natural. And you must have a real talent for bringing out sort of that with people. I think doing the pre-interviews and really talking to people ahead of time, getting to know them, spending time. You know, during COVID, it was it had to be on Zoom. But um, still, I think you can forge a relationship. And to me, that's really important when I'm doing um, interviews, especially for a film like this, where the interviews are, we knew they were going to be such an important part of the film. And then what I did was I I wore a microphone as well as, as the person I was interviewing. And I wanted to capture those interactions because you know, I knew that there'd be interesting moments. I knew that um, we could create moments in the interview that would be revealing and would help tell the story. So there are moments where, you know, you hear my question, you hear my voice. And um, and then, you know, there's a pause sometimes. And I love those pauses. I love those moments where you get to see um, the person's face and their their expression and their reaction to your question, because sometimes that's more interesting than the answer they give. And, uh, you know, and so, for example, when I was interviewing Mac, one of the first things I asked him was, um, um, how did killing people change you? And you see his expression. In fact, he doesn't even answer the question. You can see the but, emotion. But there's so much emotion and he, you know, he's on camera for I don't know, 10 or 15 seconds, not answering the question. You know, he drinks a glass of water, he rubs his face. He, 
he he doesn't know where to go but you you learn so much about him and his character in in that non answer and so i love moments like that i love thinking about interviews as almost like verite potentially verite moments mm. so when you have multiple cameras and and both people are wearing microphones you can really capture these interactions and i think those can be very revealing absolutely i mean if you you know with that approach as well you must have had a lot of footage and sort of you looking for those moments those pauses how did you then move into editing it all into the final product that took a long time the edit the edit was several months okay and you know there was a period of time where we thought you know maybe this is a feature doc you know it was like at it some point was, i think you've got like, more than enough material for that yeah we had a lot of material and i think at some point it was like over 50 minutes and then, you know when you get to that point you're like should we go longer or should we go shorter you know and uh we ultimately decided to go shorter and as it got shorter and shorter it got better and better and that's that's happened a few times with films i made where we were at that cusp and we decided to go shorter and it, and it sort of everything came together so it ultimately became a 30 minute film and it's very tight there's nothing extra in there it moves really fast and i think for this story that that works i i really like the way it moves yeah the only sort of extra bits you've got are your aerial shots um mm -hmm. when you're sort of describing you know the layout and everything Yes. Um, yeah. There's a lot of, um, we didn't, for this film, we did not want to use reenactment. Mm. Um, in fact, for most films, I, I, I'm not really into that. Uh, but um, I really, am, I like to give the viewer an opportunity to imagine what happened. You know, when you, when you don't have footage of the moments, when you don't have archival, you have to find a way to illustrate it. And I want to give the viewer agency to, imagine what happened in their mind almost as if you were listening to a, a podcast or a radio story yeah. and so the the aerial shots that we used um, as people are telling the story they give you a sense of the setting of the place you're looking down on it but um, you can't quite see what's going on down there but you know what we're talking about is going on down there and I like that giving the viewer that space so that they can imagine just what happened, what it looked like, what it felt like. Mm. Uh, I think that becomes more interesting. Mm. No, definitely. And talking about earlier when you mentioned you could have gone, you know, longer or you could have gone shorter. What do you feel? Um, wh why do you like to produce short documentaries? Well, a couple of reasons. Um, for one thing, uh, they're, they're easier to make, you know, you don't have to raise as much money. Um, yeah. You can just, with a short, you can almost just say, I'm just going to do this. Like, I want to do this. I'm just going to do it. Because usually the budget is, you know, such that you can at least get it off the ground. Um, with a feature doc, it's a little harder, you know, that the uh, the um, barrier to entry for budget wise is is greater. So that's one one reason, because I, I like to sometimes jump into projects and I just get hooked on a story and I'm like, I got to do this. Okay. So um, that's one thing. But another is that I think the short film is really um, an, an incredible format, especially now that we can distribute things um, online. You know, it used to be that you could really only see f films in the movie theater or on, you know, on on dvd but with you know with with the internet and everything it's like shorts are people want shorts i th I actually find that we get so many views on our short films mm. you know it's it's there really is an audience for it and um and you know i've had people at our screenings of stranger at the gate i've had people come up to me and and thank me for for the short, you know, saying like, thank you for making this short. It's really, it really works. And, and, you know, it also leaves an opportunity for discussion. Yeah. So at our screenings, you know, the film is a half hour and we have another half hour, 40 minutes to 
have a Q and A, and it's really exciting. You know, it works. It works really well, and in some ways, I think it's it's perfect for screenings and for for classrooms,、mm -hmm. and also just to watch at home on your computer. So,、um, I'm into I'm into the short film. Format a lot.、Yeah. I've done a lot of them lately. You now have your Oscar nomination,、um, which is so brilliant. How do you think it's going to help you open up this conversation that you want in your film? When we finished the film, we the first thing we did is we showed it to the people at the Islamic Center、mm -hmm. where we filmed it because we wanted to make sure they liked it and that that we got it right. So we set up a screening. About eighty people came. We, we gathered in the basement of the Islamic Center in Muncie, Indiana, and、um, you know everyone watched the film. And when the lights came up, <clears throat> I didn't know what people were going to think.、Um, one person stood up and said, "I I want to say one thing.、Uh, I believe that every American needs to see this film." And You know, the first reaction I had was a sense of relief that we—I think we got it right. Yeah. And then the second reaction was a sense of obligation, like, okay, that now we've got to do this, which was always the intention, but we've really got to get this film out there because the message is important. And so, you know, with the Oscar nomination, it's just such a huge gift to this story and to its message because. We're reaching so many more people as a result of it, and that's so exciting to all of us who worked on the film. It's、mm. it's a game changer. Yeah, absolutely. It's 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 a whole new platform for people to hear you and and to watch the film. Like you said, it's it's、yeah. a really really powerful message. Thank、so、you. So, what about you personally? Then, what are you working on next? Well, we're continuing to do this work with the、um, the films about.、Uh, American Muslims. We're we're working on a new film about a 9/11 hate crime victim who was、uh, who was actually shot in the face and survived. And it's about his life and his transformation after having that experience.、Mm. So that's、um, that's going to be the next short that we we do. Amazing. Well, Joshua, thank you. Thank you for talking to me. Of course. Thanks for having me.